Hi, everybody. It's uh, Joe Chaffee here on this um, Monday. I uh, figured to wait until the new advisories are, gonna, are coming out. We're going to actually start today uh, with Hurricane Maria, uh, which has been intensifying rapidly. We've seen uh, pressure falling at the rate of two millibars an hour for the last uh, 12 hours or so. And uh, we are now uh, with a Category 3 hurricane, and the timing here is not good. Uh, for the Leeward Islands because it is just approaching uh, the uh, southern and central Leeward Islands right at the point that it went through this massive uh, rapid intensification process. And we're going to show you, uh, we'll start off with the satellite loop here and uh, we'll uh, put it right there. And that's the, re the new recon report, which I'll bring up in just a second. Uh, but uh, you can see this has uh, really gotten that very symmetric hurricane look, starting to take on that classic, you know, double commas, the, uh, the upside down, right side up comma uh, look to it with uh, very good inflow, your, the excellent outflow, uh, minimal to no wind shear at all. This is in an absolute ideal environment for rapid strengthening. And I think we're going to see this continue to strengthen and probably reach category four status at, at the very least. Uh, as it moves along uh, to the northwest. And let me just uh, really fast, let's say quick good morning to David, uh, Jerry, and Cynthia. Good morning. Ray Pickles, good morning to you. So we have a potentially serious situation here. Um, actually, it isn't a potentially serious. It is a serious situation. It's developing uh, for the Leeward Islands and eventually for the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico. Uh, take a look at the <coughs> reconnaissance uh, aircraft report uh, on here, I'm going to see if I can get it a little, but a little more of a zoom. That'll that'll work better. Um, great. Okay, so you can see the two passes. And by the way, there's some lag time here. There's been a subsequent uh, there have been subsequent passes. So we went from 968 to 966. Uh, the Hurricane Center on their new advisory is reporting 959 millibars. Um, so we've had a pressure drop of nine millibars in the time that the three passes were done here. So we're talking really rapid strengthening is going on. Now, where the bottom is, uh, that uh, at this point, I don't know. You know, there's likely that there'll be some sort of eye wall replacement cycle, uh, which these things love to do. Uh, but I, I'm not quite sure whether we've reached that point yet. This uh, really looks like it, it, it wants to uh, intensify uh, and at just the wrong time because of where it is with respect to the islands. It is now uh, bearing down on the island. So I'm going to, um, at this point, put the uh, new Hurricane Center forecast map up. And since we, uh, you know, we do know that the um, communications in a lot of these islands has, has been spotty at best and in some places completely cut off, so this might be the only way somebody gets to see or hear what's going on with respect to Maria. So uh, I'm going to uh, go back to the advisory here and um, go over all the changes because there have been some changes. So give me one second. We'll bring that up. And OK, one of the new big ch the new changes is the. Uh, addition of a hurricane warning now uh, for the U.S. Virgin Islands. So uh, here, here's, here's the important information. Uh, it's at, it's 60, 60 miles east of the island of Martinique and 95 miles east-southeast of Dominica. Top winds are 120 miles an hour, moving west-northwest at 10 and a pressure of 959 millibars to 8.32 inches. And as I said, we have been in this rapid strengthening mode so we've got hurricane warnings up for uh, Guadalupe, uh, Dominica, St. Kitts, Nevis, Montserrat, Mont Martinique, St. Lucia, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and the British Virgin Islands, all now under a hurricane warning. Tropical storm warnings up for Antigua, Barbuda, Saba, St. Eustatius, uh, St. Martin, uh, Anguilla. Uh, we have a hurricane watch in effect for uh Puerto Rico, Vieques, uh, Culebra, Saba, St. Eustatius, St. Martin, the French side, St. Martin, the Dutch side, uh, and St. Bartholomé uh, and Anguilla. A tropical storm watch is in effect for Barbados, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. So the big change here is that the hurricane warning has now gone up for the U.S. Virgin Islands 
and it's also up, uh, has been up for the British Virgin Islands. And Puerto Rico uh, will be uh, next because the models are all pretty uh, consistent in bringing this pretty much as a direct pass over the island of Puerto Rico as a major hurricane uh, later Tuesday uh, with weather conditions deteriorating in the Virgin Islands uh, probably uh, later late tonight and really going full force uh, during the day uh, uh, Tuesday into into Wednesday morning and then of course we start to get into hurricane conditions in Puerto Rico uh, Wednesday morning uh, and during the day Wednesday and it will make a very close pass to the Dominican Republic as well so that the north shore of the Dominican Republic uh, particularly the northeastern corner. So just bear that in mind. I know a lot of folks who, you know, if you vacation down, there are some very popular vacation destinations uh, in the northeastern part of the DR and also, you know, in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. Um, obviously, Irma did, did, did t took a huge toll on, the, on many of the Virgin Islands. So there may not be many tourists there now. Um, and a lot of these islands have been evacuated. And uh, certainly that is a pretty wise thing to do. So uh, let's um, look at the hurricane model forecast tracks and then we're going to get to Jose. I'm not going to do a whole lot of map looking at that uh, at, at this point because um, I got I got to get moving to get to work but I will live stream again this evening and we'll get into it a little bit more with regards to the guidance. But you can see on the hurricane tracking models they all take it uh, over the leewards um, the uh, right over Puerto Rico uh, and then that skimming just to the north of uh, the, the DR uh, and and east of the Bahamas. Now this is going to hinge on what Jose does and what that was we talked about yesterday that trough that's going to form uh, in the eastern part of the United States with respect to Jose and and let's look at Jose now which is you know really it is to some degree it's not you know it's looking less and less like you know the uh, say the classic look of what a tropical system is supposed to look like and, and it's looking you know gradually making that transformation over into uh, a, a non-tropical uh, cyclone like you would see in the winter time but it's still you know fairly wound up here this is not unimpressive there's a uh, you can see clearly on the visible the circulation center but all of the key activity now is shifted uh, to the north and to the north of the center, there really isn't too much going on to the south. So, you know, it's kind of like looking like a, a typical uh, nor'easter as it moves on up. And you can uh, follow the center. Uh, it's a, just to the west of 71 West. It's tracking to the north. It, it keeps doing these little jogs, you know, a little jog to the, to the west, a little jog to the east. But the, the uh, average motion uh, is to the north. And when, when we look at it with respect to the east coast, uh, you can take a look right here. Um, hang on, I'm going to grab that little circle there. And you can see uh, they are getting some clouds sweeping in from the east from off the ocean, uh, main circulation, uh, driving northward. You know, if this were sitting at about 73 west, I'd be really concerned. It's, it's actually kind of drifted out closer to 71 now, and, and all the model trends have been a little bit further to the east. So, uh, again, I want to emphasize what I have been in the last couple of days, that except for the immediate coast where there might be, you know, fringe gales going on, um, many areas just inland of the coast from Delaware on up through uh, southern New England, are, you're not going to see very much from this in terms of rain or in terms of, of wind. It's not going to be that big a deal. Right along the immediate coast, I think the biggest concern is going to be coastal flooding, and we have coastal flood watches that have been posted. Also, we have gone to a tropical storm warning uh, for block I from Block Island uh, on eastward, and I'll just uh, give you the specifics on that. Um, let me just get that advisory. So that that the um, tropical storm warning for from uh, Watch Hill, Rhode Island, to Hull, Massachusetts. So that includes Block Island, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket. Uh, everywhere else, we're still under the tropical storm watch from Fenwick Island to Sandy Hook. Uh, uh, from Delaware Bay South, uh, East Rockaway to Watch Hill. And by the way, for some reason that does not include South Brooklyn and Queens and Staten Island. I don't understand why. Um, apparently the Hurricane Center feels that that little square, that, that little uh, spot in between Sandy Hook and Rockaway, um, that they're not going to experience tropical storm conditions. And so they didn't put it up, um, you know, 
Someday somebody's going to have to really explain that one to me, but no matter. Okay, so you uh, again, uh, I'm, I don't think this is going to be a huge deal, um, but um, you know we're still going to keep an eye on it as it moves up the coast. It is going to be uh, just offshore, uh, and the other question is with regards to it is is the loop uh, that it's supposed to do. So you can uh, take a look at the hurricane track models, and they all uniformly. Um, do the loop thing so i'll show you that but there you have it um let me get it a little wider here and it's see it's just to the east it really is it's right along or just it was just to the left of 70 west you know one of the nam models last night actually brought the surface low almost touching uh, the south shore of long island and uh, that would have been uh if that were correct i don't know why the the models the you know the, the nam especially has been kind of volatile with these with these things that it's been doing from time to time and it leads to a lot of confusion but the the nams look last night took a low just south of the south shore of long island which would have brought whole gales everywhere but it was the only model that did it so, so it was pretty much discounted and you can see they all do this looping motion some of them bring it back to the coast later in the week and see this, this is the issue with regards to coastal flooding because of the fact that we are going to be dealing with winds off the ocean for the next several days and we have the astronomical high tides uh, and uh, also uh, the autumnal equinox uh, all coinciding. So the tides actually won't peak until we get to Thursday and Friday. The new moon is on Wednesday. So we're going to have to wait till, um, till Friday in order to uh, see the results of uh, probably the maximum amount of coastal flooding. So there may be coastal flood issues up and down uh, from uh, the up and down the New Jersey coast and for Long Island for the next uh, at least the next three or four days. So that I think is going to be the primary um, focus here. So look, let me just uh, run by uh, you guys in the chat real quick. Thank you for being here uh, today. I really appreciate it. It's just been it's a little bit of a busy day for me, so um, I, I got to cut this first uh, video uh, and keep it short. But I just wanted to give you uh, all the latest information. Raleigh Vo Voigt, uh, hi back. Uh, uh, and say hi to Hartford for me. A uh, nice town. Um, greetings from Miami. Balfour Wheatley, good to see you. I'm glad everything in South Florida is getting uh, back uh, slowly to normal. John Butcher, um, Earl Warren, uh, PRJ Grudge, uh, Alan Bacon. The average life of a hurricane, roughly about 10 days. Um, some as little as a day. Others have lasted as long as uh, I think uh, there are a couple on record that have uh, maintained hurricane status for almost four weeks, so uh, in, in varying degrees, um, but those are rare. Most, it's usually about 10 days or so. Um, Nova Scotia getting lots of rain. I don't know. I don't know that you're going to get very much out of this because it's doing this loop to the south, but I got to give it a closer look, Justin, uh, which I'll do later on. Um, uh, Cynthia, very quick there with this uh, CG... Uh, John in uh, 1994, uh, longest lasting um, hurricane, I believe. Uh, and that I think it was on the Pacific side. Um, and that was 31 days. Excellent. All right. So look, I'm, I'm going to cut it short now. Uh, have a great uh, rest of your Monday and be safe. And, and uh, we'll uh, update you later today uh, on, on what's happening. And we'll go over the computer models. We'll have everything later this afternoon and this evening. So it'll, you know, with the European uh, I don't didn't want to go back and just use the old guidance at this point. So um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll tackle all this uh, sometime later this evening. See you later.